Your Bruin Solutions on the Car Guy Coffee Podcast, Rise of the Solutionary Series. This is the Jump Box. Let's brew. Boom! Hey, car guys and car gals, welcome back! Yeah, Fred over here hitting that whoa. Hit that whoa. Again. Oh, getting that whoa <laughs> over there. Man, speaking of moves real quick, before we even get onto the jump box, the one thing that I make sure is always connected to my battery or getting my battery started is the ability to drop three Fs. That's forgive, focus, and fly. So being a guest on the show, Adam, I need you to work those moves with us real quick since you're so good at moving. And doing what it is that you do, we're going to work on these moves real quick because it's an inside and a mental thing that you got to make sure that you do. And put your, put your hands on your shoulders real quick. You're going to forgive. Wipe that junk off your shoulders. The weight of unforgiveness, get that off. Forgive. Wipe that off. And then get focused. Now let's fly. There we go. So now that he's already got down a couple of the moves that we actually get down and do, what we are going to do, car guys and car gals, is we are going to address the negative, and we're going to unveil the positive, and we are going to let Adam Marburger attach his jump box to your battery inside of your professional car guy, car gal world right now. Adam, what do you have to add to these professionals that are trying to find a way to jumpstart their engine and get moving in the right direction? What is it that you got to drop on that? So my little swag here will be F&I related, okay? But salespeople can also use some of this. So the ability for a sales consultant, a sales professional, a finance professional to identify uh, a personality type is what's going to allow you to overcome objections. So my claim to fame is service contract sales. I mean, I, I truly believe that almost Everyone needs a service contract. So, I mean, when I say almost, or I'm talking about a two-year lease on a BMW, and you, you don't need a service contract, but that's a small percentage of the buyers. I believe that almost all of us need a service contract. The first problem is F&I people don't think that or believe that. The second thing is the consumer also doesn't believe or think that. But here as a professional, we have to save our customers from themselves. So what happens a lot of times You know, there's two ways to sell service contracts. Our agency has perfected the hard no value objection. You know, everybody can do the payment manipulation. I can extend the term, okay? I can can repair scare you guys. Well, what if you don't buy a service contract? What about the technology? What if your car breaks down? Or how are you going to afford it? You can go that route, but that's what I call... That is spray and pray, okay? You're going to spray a bunch of stuff to a consumer, and you're going to pray that they say, yes, so this is what I do a little differently. This is what I teach my dealers to do a little bit differently. And if you want to run a 70 to 80% service contract penetration, which will build more wealth for a dealer than anything, period, amen, is to master the art of service contract injection. So the customer comes in and Maybe they're a little combative. Maybe they just, they don't want the service. I mean, they cut you off. Maybe they're a little rude. The best thing that an F&I professional can do is kind of reset the pocket. And we have to make a statement to the customer, okay? We've got to make a very elegant statement. And it's a very simple statement. So I simply ask my consumer, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, you were quick to decline the coverage. What's the main reason you prefer to be unprotected? I say the word unprotected last for a reason because the word unprotected sucks. Nobody likes that word, okay? So then the consumer, if they're a hard no customer, which is the toughest customer, they're going to tell you. The key is to get them to say it. They just have to say it so it's validated. So when I ask my consumer, what's the main reason you prefer to be unprotected, what you're going to hear is, I don't ever buy them. I don't believe in them. I'm going to self-insure because I'm a billionaire. had one before and it never covered anything. So then I use what's called a feel felt found technique that's been around for decades. I know how you feel, Mr. Customer. You know, I felt the exact same way because growing up, my dad and I, we worked on Chevys. I mean, that's kind of what we did. I mean, we worked on cars together. 
My dad and his dad worked on cars together. That's how we bond. Unfortunately, now, because technology showed up, we bond at the bar and not under the car. And let me share something with you real quick, Mr. Consumer. The service contract, it just doesn't work the way you think it does. And if it did, I wouldn't buy it. So I'm going to share something with you real quick that might change your perception. See, the service contract, yes, it does pay for repairs. Yeah, it's going to give you a car to drive. And pretty important here, it's never going to inconvenience you. But I believe that those three things are icing on the cake. See, the service contract, it's designed to give you a defined exit strategy. And this is what I mean by that. When you come into my store, like a lot of my consumers, they want the lowest payment, the lowest rate, the best deal. I've got customers that drive 200 miles to save 200 bucks. But see, we lose sight of our exit strategy. We're so focused on the entry of the deal. We're not thinking about our exit. And the service contract is a, is a tool to allow you to potentially keep the car a little bit longer. It'll allow you to negotiate in a position of strength. See, my customer that comes back in to trade a vehicle, if they have a service contract, they get to come in the showroom floor. They get to flex a little bit. They can demand more for their trade. I can take their car back to the service department. I can have it looked over. I can give them more trade allowance. And guess what? The insurance company doesn't want you to do this, and you can cancel that policy. And then you have the ability to combat depreciation. See, depreciation is the biggest expense we all ever occur. A $30,000 car in three years is worth 15,000 bucks. And another three years, it's worth $7,500. Depreciation unequivocally is the biggest expense will ever occur. So how do we combat it? Well, the service contract. Let me share a quick story with you real quick. Oh. And this is something, this is something here, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, that kind of changed my perception. My wife and I just bought a Volkswagen. We got a Volkswagen Atlas and we did a six year special APR on the deal. And VW has a six year, 72,000 mile full comprehensive warranty. My wife drives 10,000 miles a year. She could potentially keep the car five, six, seven years. She doesn't need a new car every single year. On the surface level, do I need a service contract? Most would say no. I mean, why would you need a service contract? But this is what I did and this is why I'm going to share this with you because I think you're going to, you're going to find a little value. So the payment's 750 bucks a month. Okay. So 750 bucks times 12, that's $9,000. So I'm sitting there thinking to myself, well, I know my wife could keep it eight years. I, I, there's a chance she could keep it seven, eight, nine years. I just know her. So why not with a 10 year service contract, a 10 year, 150,000 mile policy, if she keeps that car one more year, I put nine G's in my bank account and guess what else I did? I didn't go trade the car and get punched in the face with depreciation, interest, and sales tax. What if I keep the car two years longer? It's 18,000 bucks. What if something crazy happens and she keeps it for 10, for 10 years because it's covered like new for 10 years? That's $36,000 that I can put down on my car and the service contract costs me three grand. So my question for you, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, do you like depreciation? Or do you, do you like cash? Because you could have a whole lot of cash with a service contract. So I can bring you guys, and I'm not going to do this for you now, but I've got, and this is what I do for my dealers. I teach dealers how to sell service contracts to funnel the reinsurance positions to build massive wealth. And if they build that massive wealth, they can pay their employees appropriately. I teach dealers how to sell service contracts to the customers that absolutely do not want them. So that's kind of what I do. I'm excited. I want to actually, I'm kind of upset that I can't leave and go to one of my dealerships right now and take a deal. I want a customer, right? You I want are, I'm a hey, I was, bring it I to like, me, baby. What we have to do guys and gals as an industry is we need to stop using old school techniques. We need to use logic. Mm. We need to use facts. We need to understand who our customer is. We need to listen to them a little bit more. We need to just relax when the customer says no. It's no worries. Hey, Mr. Customer, what's the main reason you prefer to be unprotected? You say the word unprotected last, you're going to have success. Nobody likes that word. And then whenever they give you the objection, I don't care what the objection is, they're all the same to me. You, you can just isolate it and you can come back with a simple, I know how you feel. I felt the same way. Here's what I found out. Let me share a story. We are designed and hardwired for story. If you can learn to tell a story, you can close, period. Even salespeople, or salesperson says, tell a story. Storytelling sells. So I challenge my F&I people to use less repair scare. Use that less old school mentality. Serve your consumer. Serve them. 
offer them solutions and let them mm. let them bring up the objection and don't be afraid of it and use logic. If you use logic and story, you sell. Period. Amen. Period. Sorry, that's I can sell. Right that's now. damn, man. That is wow. That's awesome. That's exciting. Car guys, mm. car gals. I know that I got something out of this. If you didn't get I something, a lot. something out of this, you're I'm irresponsible. <laughs> but I am excited uh, to make sure that we are getting things jumping for you. We are ready to almost jump to the next segment. Subprime Hero, I know you got some a little bit of wind in your cape on that one. What did you like with that? Oh, man. You know, I was talking to Adam right before that segment, and I was telling him about that close. I watched the video and talked about that. And, man, I learned a lot from it. Watching it again live as – just sitting here talking to him, I felt like the customer. That's how passionate he is about. Look, that's a professional. So all you all out there who are out there trying to use word tracks and you kind of stumble through them, he didn't stumble through it at all. That You could tell that is well-versed. He practices. He Perfect practice makes perfect, and he does that. That is a true professional. Not only is he a professional in his verbiage, but in how he says it because he means it from here. This isn't like just some a story that he's just, you know, lollygagging through. He's telling it with passion and like, like he, you're like, to the point where like we're all drawn into that. And that's the key, being a storyteller, like he says, it's drawing people into what you have to say. They feel that emotion. Once they get that emotion in them, the magic what happens, you know? And it's, it's, it starts with doing that and then you build trust. They trust you, they feel you, they, they, you empathize with them. Man, great job, Adam. That, that was a yeah, great close. I mean, that's, probably, that's a strong as heck. I mean, if anybody out there wants to learn a close that's having problem with warranties, there's a free tidbit right there for you. You just practice that. Watch that video over and over, and I promise you, if you can work on that, that'll you'll get so way more higher penetration. Which everybody will be very, Every- very, very much in your applause section if you're selling more warranties inside of your box. Car guys and car gals, thank you so much for enjoying this moment of the Jump F&I box. We'll be right back. <laughs> 